Oh, that's fun, Mr. Clown. Let's make more jolly talk together. Oh, boy, oh, boy, let's do. Let's all do it. What's that, Mr. Clown? Oh, you want me to sing it? All right, here we go. Turn off the radio, Sister Joan. Our ceremony will begin soon, and I'd like to go over some things with you and take off that rosary. The spirit will choke you with it before you can get a Lord's Prayer in. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, Father Jude. I'm just uh, nervous, I guess. This is my first, um, you know. Uh, and that girl looks like she's in some real pain in there. Oh, can we just get started? It's very important, Sister Joan, not to go in blind. After all, this balcony is where it happened. This is where Jessica was possessed by the ancient creature inside her. It is one hell of a view, is it not? Yes, it seems the Walsh family is very wealthy. I had to pay $50 to park my car down the street. But what's so special about this place? About Jessica Walsh? Uh, why has this demon chosen her? You're right, sister. These oceanfront condos are worth a fortune. The Walsh family, and many others, have paid millions of dollars to live here. This place is exclusive. It is a place where a family can live in absolute luxury, unfazed by the outside world. It is just them, their balconies, and their beloved sand and sea. However, they did not consider one thing. The drum circles that form late at night down by the shore. <laughs> Drum circles? What could a bunch of drunk teens and neo-hippies have to do with a possession of this caliber? Everything. Yes, they are all just musicians, young artists, college kids, and pot-addled outsiders. But every full moon, they meet down there, on the sand. They light fires and make catcalls at the moon, and play their drums. The drum is the instrument of the spirit world. The devil can hear it like a call. Without knowing it, these young people are taking part in an ancient pagan tradition. They are summoning the dead. Let's see here. Hmm. Ah, drum circles, drum circles. Uh, ah, yes. It says here, we are forbidden from ever playing the drum. Played on a full moon or by a fire, any manner of ancient devils can be summoned. Correct. So you see, sister, Jessica Walsh had just gotten into bed when she heard the drums. Being a young woman, curious, she opened the French doors of her balcony and gazed below at the coven of drummers on the shore of the beach. She would have looked into the fire. And suddenly, 
as if she'd known the creature lurking within all her life. She said its name. <gasps> but how? Her parents said Jessica is just a typical high school senior. She's not a witch or a medium. How could she have known the spirit's name? Ah, uh, well, some people are very sensitive to these things. I once met a little boy who knew the true name of a baby demon. The boy accidentally babbled it when he was only just a toddler, and the thing latched onto him like a Siamese twin. By the time he was 22, the demon had grown so fat and heavy, it almost crushed him to death. I almost lost a hand trying to pry that thing off the poor boy's back. Yes, some people are just sensitive to these things. So, Jessica's one of these sensitive individuals. I see. Yes. And when she said this creature's name, our poor Jessica was lost. Several of the onlookers I interviewed told me that they watched her leap from this very balcony. What is this, the 18th floor of the building? She should have been crushed. But she was not. Because she was no longer human. She had all the power of whatever creature lies inside her now. She landed on her feet and ran towards the drums, ripping off her clothes. Ah, yes. That's when the people started filming her. All these videos online now. Girl strips at drum circle. Oh, and these comments, they're just awful. Of course, the internet makes even the supernatural into a big joke. Those people have no idea they are actually watching an ancient spirit celebrating its unnatural return to Earth. You can see in the video Jessica spinning in circles, chanting in Latin, grinning widely at the moon with her arms outstretched. But it is something she said that caught my attention. Ego som novem caudatus vulpes. Hmm. And what does it mean? My Latin isn't very good. I am the nine-tailed fox. Nine-tailed fox? The Chinese fox spirit? <clears throat> that doesn't make sense. Those spirits are shapeshifters. They don't need to possess anyone to walk on Earth. Right again. This has to be a much older spirit than that. I've seen possessions before, but never of this caliber. Usually spirits can enter the body of those that are susceptible, but most of them can't actually take control of the person. They just observe through their eyes. In more severe cases, a spirit can take control of a person for a few days, but the person almost always dies, and their bodies begin to lose their shape as the spirit's true form manifests, tearing the body apart from the inside out. But Jessica, she hasn't changed a bit. She still has all her beauty and health, and she hasn't been in control of her body for over a week. No, this is a truly ancient spirit. And it is evil. It is evil as hell. I think I've changed my mind. I, I can't do this. I've only been at this for six months. I, I did manage to pull an Etsy spirit from an old house in Texas, but I am hardly qualified to deal with something like this. I think you've got the wrong girl. But this is exactly why I chose you. You, Sister Joan, are unspoiled by the ego and power of the church. You are a pure soul. I need you to help me with this. Do it for Jessica. Oh, may God be with me for Jessica. Let's go inside now. She's waiting for us. Heavens, my priests are so handsome and so finely dressed. Blessed, blessed I am. Yes, 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 yes. Don't listen to it, Joan. Only speak to Jessica. Of course. Uh, hello, dear girl. I am Sister Joan. This is Father Jude. We are here to help you, dear girl. Your mom and dad are very worried. Oh, mommy and daddy are worried, are they? Well, they shouldn't be. For never ever 
Has there been a sweet girl as lucky or wild as me? Father Jude, I can see it in her eyes. This thing isn't human. I don't think Jessica's even in there anymore. She is, sister. She is. But our voices are too muffled by the sound of the drums in her head. We need to reach her with the sounds of the earth. I will start. Follow my lead. <laughs> what music can you make to ease her plight? The girl has been taken and fed to the night. And all that there is today is light. The first light glistening through the morning dew. Do not interfere with me, priest. I warn you. Do not say such things, sweet Jessica. You are of this earth. Fight the hellish drums. I have a sweet song for you. Follow me, little man, and I'll cover your wounds with a sacred delusion. Love conquers all. Everything happens for a reason. Just hang in. You anger me with your banging and scratching, you self-righteous prick. In your own admiration, you gorge with blood and grow long and sharp and thick. Come now, Jessica. Is that any way to speak to your friend? Joan, I've weakened her. Do it now. What? Oh, yes. Okay, my turn. Jessica, sweet girl, I know you are feeling ill. Go away from those sad drums and those flames of light. Come towards the sounds I make for you. Come home to us. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ compels you. The body of Christ compels you. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. Divine mercy. Out. Divine mercy. Cast you out. Yeah. 
aren't you a hero, brave and true? You see the world in silver and blue when I am reborn into this new form. I'll make a museum of you. Sister Joan, cover your ears. She's about to attack. Don't listen to her. Again. Again. In dragon form, I will perform my tricks upon the land. For I am the horse. What a beautiful sound. What a beautiful, beautiful sound. Snap out of it, Joan. Come with me. I must speak to you on the balcony. Uh, uh, I know I shouldn't have listened, but that sound. It's like everything that I ever believed was wrong. It was beautiful. Oh, enough of your rambling, you fool. We have to get the hell out of here. What do you mean, Father Jude? But the exorcism! Jessica! Are you deaf, Joan? Did you not hear what just happened? That thing in there is not a spirit. That's Lucinox. I can't believe I'm saying that name. How is this possible? She's been imprisoned in purgatory since the dawn of time. How did she escape? Lucinox? What in God's name? Quiet! Don't say God's name here. You're gonna piss her off even more. But who is she? I swore upon my life never to reveal the truth. But if Lucinox has somehow managed to escape her prison in purgatory, then this is Armageddon. I'll tell you the secret that our kind has kept from the masses for thousands of years. In the beginning, there was only darkness, but the darkness was far from empty. There was a great dragon, Lucinox. She was beautiful and pure. Her wings spanned the entire universe, and her eyes shined with the light of a trillion stars. There were other dragons, but none of them possessed such a light. They cast her out, 
to a life of solitude for all eternity. She was completely alone, and from her was born the first sadness in the world, until one day she met another creature from those times. He was small, smaller than she was, but just as powerful. He had a shape similar to that of mankind, but not exactly. Little bird, he called her, why are you so sad? She said to this creature, I am sad because I am alone. I am cursed with this light, and I am an outcast. And then the human-like creature told her, I am an outcast too, but only because in all of space and time, I am the only one of my kind. Perhaps we can be friends, little bird. And the two ancient creatures became companions for a billion years. Lucy Knox fell madly in love with her friend, and from her was born the first happiness in the world. Until one day, the love she felt for her eternal companion manifested itself within her. She became impregnated with it. Her belly grew swollen with it. For ages she carried around this entity inside her. And one day, as she happened to be flying through the area that we now call the universe, she burst into a roar of pain. She opened her gargantuan mouth wide, and the scream that emanated from her sounded a lot like a big bang. And from her mouth came a great ball of light, the first fire that we now call the sun. The tears streamed from her eyes and left millions of little orbs of light, the night stars, in all the space that surrounded her during that celestial birth. And all the other dragons came to watch this spectacle. All the creatures from that time surrounded her, amazed and ecstatic. She had broken the eternal darkness. She had set it ablaze. When the sacred birth was done, the great orb of light stood still in the place of its birth, shining wildly, gloriously. The dragons howled and chanted, Goddess, Goddess, the goddess Lucinox has given birth to a son. Every creature in existence at that time came to celebrate the goddess Lucinox and her radiant son. And then her companion, the father, he said to her, He looks nothing like us, little bird. To this she replied, Well, he is only an egg, my love. He will hatch one day and he will be loved by all who know him. I see, her lover replied. And do you have a name for this beloved ball of light? Yes, she replied. His name is Lucifer, the Shining One. Her lover chuckled and embraced his dear goddess. That's a wonderful name, he said to her. For years, the great dragon's egg illuminated the universe, and Lucinox was worshipped by all. Every day she flew majestically around her dear son, breathing fire onto his egg, waiting for the blessed day that he would finally hatch. Her companion, however, had none of the light that she and their son shared. He was a creature like all the rest of the darkness, Yet he was the only one of his kind. When he held up his arms, he saw five fingers on each hand. He saw five toes on each of his feet. And one day Lucinox lovingly referred to him as her little man. This pushed him over the edge. After all, he was a god. He too had all the power of Lucinox, except the light. He didn't have the light, and from him was born the first envy that ever existed in the world. He stole the light. One day he reached into the orb of fire and ripped out the little essence inside. 
What he saw warmed his heart. The creature had five fingers on each hand, five toes on each foot. It had sharp horns and great wings like his mother's. Then the little god, with all his strength, heaved a mound of great rocks into the orbit of the empty dragon egg, and he chose the loveliest one to be the home of his only son. It took him six days and seven nights to mold the earth into a paradise, and before he set the baby Lucifer onto his new home, he remembered what a curse it is to be the only one of your kind, all alone. So he tore away the baby's horns and wings, and from them he shaped another creature. He was so proud of himself. He'd done what Lucy Knox had never done, fashioned two creatures in his own image. He named the first creature Adam and the latter Eve, and he gave them the earth. However, when Lucy Knox found out what he did, from her was born the first rage in the world. There was a war Many of the creatures from that time perished as god and goddess fought each other furiously, endlessly, until the war was won. It was the god who won. But he could not bring himself to slay his beloved Lucy Knox, so instead he locked her away in purgatory, in the realm of darkness, and he built a kingdom upon which he alone shines shines with stolen light. Oh my god. Not god, you fool. Goddess. Big, pissed off dragon goddess. I have to get out of here before she crosses over fully. The world is about to end and there are so many things I haven't done. I took a vow of celibacy for heaven's sake. No, stop right there. You brought me into this mess. You made me look into the eyes of that girl, whatever is left of her, and swear that I would get her back to her family. Now listen here. Dragon goddess or no dragon goddess, I am here for Jessica Walsh. Now tell me, damn it, how do I stop this thing? Silly girl, we could never destroy this creature. But there is something, an incantation. There's no guarantee that it'll work, that she won't eat us as soon as she crosses over, but it might just break the bind between her and Jessica, and we might save the girl. Well, let's get in there now! Well, well, did the holy men enjoy their sunshine? Well, it is something that is only mine. An empty dragon egg sits well above the kingdom of men, and now the mother comes down to condemn. Say it with me, sister. Draco Oritur. Oritur Lucinox. 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 Surge Lucinox. Surge Lucinox. was a nice nap. What time is it? Who are you people? Where's mom? Oh, Jessica, dear, you gave us quite a fright. Your parents are right downstairs. They've been worried sick. Why? Was I sick or something? You were, dear. But now you're all better. Mr. Priest, can you please give me a glass of water? I'm thirsty. Sister Joan, please get the girl a glass of water and tell her parents that she's all right. They must be sick with worry. Yes, I'll do that right now. Oh, I can't believe we pulled it off. Hey, kid. You did it. You're a hero. <laughs> Just doing my job. Ah, yes, the parents. I'll be right back. The ritual is complete. Lucy, 
Mother, is that you? Of course, Adam. Sweet boy, you did a fine job. The girl is a little frail for my taste, though. I would have preferred a great big ox of a woman. <sighs> but I suppose this will do. Who cares about that now? We're both here, on Earth. Oh, the things we can do now. We can watch the ballet in Paris. Break into the pyramids in Egypt. Hell, we can make a fortune in the stock market and live the good life. It will be paradise again. That paradise that was taken from me so long ago. <laughs> oh, you and your paradise. I haven't waited millions of years to become a tourist boy. This entire world was forged with light that was stolen from me. Look up there, the big empty egg that I once loved above all things. It sickens me to look at it now. I'm here to snuff it out. You are my son, or at least some mangled version of what Lucifer would have been. So, I will not harm you, but it is time for us to part. You go enjoy your paradise. <laughs> well, there's still something left for you to enjoy anyway. What are you talking about? Our plans. Lucy. My name is Jessica Walsh now, and if you'll excuse me, my parents must be worried sick. What have I done?